Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and we've got another installment of Hot Takes, where I take your hot takes. That's that that that's it. That's that's what it is. <laughs> so, uh, what this episode is, is going to be technically a little special, though. I haven't asked for a new round of hot takes. What I have done is kind of gone back and looked at some of the older ones that I never used in videos, um, and I th at least I don't think I remember I used in videos, and uh, sort of give them a hindsight uh, comment now, or kind hindsight hot take. All of them sort of have like a, a timeline on these hot takes and sort of a, a look at now that some of these are, I mean, some of these are fairly new. They're only like a month old, these hot takes, but sort of a look at how things have changed over the years. And so uh, that's what we're going to do today. So uh, they're not super old takes, but uh, we'll sort of see how they've aged a little bit. I feel like within the next three years or so, we'll see another big spike in popularity in EDM like in the early 2010s. This time uh, around, it actually lasts and doesn't fizzle out like the last wave. Um, I will say, first off, I don't feel like it's fizzled out. I don't feel like the the, la the wave is fizzled out. EDM is so popular now, and it's so ingrained in in, in pop music nowadays. But um, I understand the sentiment behind the comment, and the reason I did the bring this one up is because um, this was before the, this comment at least, was before the real rise of Fred again and Skrillex. And so uh, with the kind of Fred again bringing in the clubhouse to the commercial masses and sort of making it a very, very popular genre and style, style again to commercial appeal, as well as Skrillex obviously coming back into the limelight and being the sort of big um, pioneer of the EDM sound uh, to the commercial masses. Um, EDM is definitely hitting an, a big spike in terms of, I guess, playability and the kind of bigger names uh, and more people listening to quote unquote EDM. So uh, this one is a, a take that went well, I would say so far. Monster Cat is dying because of the pop overflow. It's slowly becoming way too much mainstream. Like, why is there funk and pop on Monster Cat? I didn't come to Monster Cat to search for pop or funk. <laughs> um, I mean, sure, I guess that's just your own opinion. I think you could say this about really any other genre, and I get pop and funk are, like, the more commercialized genres, but I mean, like, I feel like you could say that about any genre, like, I didn't come to Monster Cat for my trance and, and house, I came for my dubstep, but, like, half the label is, is trance, not half the label, but you know what I mean, it is this other stuff, but, um, I, I don't think this is a bad thing, necessarily, and also, a lot of them are just categorized in a certain way, like, there's a lot of older songs on Monster High that could nowadays be labeled as pop uh, that really weren't or like or indie dance or something like that. And so, uh, yeah, I, I just feel like <laughs> um, I, I get that Monster Cap isn't a, a, a pop label, uh, but uh, they can do whatever they want. And so far, the personally, I also haven't really loved, I would say, the pop labeled tracks as tons some of the other ones. But uh, yeah, I, I get it. They can do what they want. And um, I guess we're along for the ride. That being said, I do like funk. I'm, I'm kind of a fan of funk. So uh, medium take. Dubstep sucks. Four on the floor music rules. Uh, I really decided this one because I wanted to say, why can't it be both? TikTok is completely ruining the music industry, specifically with popular music. Nowadays, songs only get popular if they get used in TikTok sounds, and in result, songs become shorter to appeal to the short nature of TikTok. Not only this, but people create sped up and slowed down versions of tracks if something is trending on TikTok. Artists will just try to do something that follows the trend. No one popular is original anymore. Fair uh, to some extent, I do get that. Um, in the age of TikTok, it is fascinating to see another big uh, like social media platform come out. I feel like it's it was a while that like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, like Snapchat, they kind of ruled the airwaves and had been popular since like the early 2010s. But we didn't really see TikTok as the first thing that really challenged those in any capacity, and so. It, it's weird to see every everything is really changing. F content, short form content, long form content, interviews, everything is sort of changing and revolving around TikTok uh, because it's so, it's just such a, a cultural zeitgeist, is that even the right word? Um, of just how there's just everything sort of revolves around this new social media platform. And so uh, what I say it's making it worse, I think it's making it different. Um, I have noticed the effects, especially over the last couple of years of, of songs getting definitely shorter. Uh, but I also just think that's a product of the times. I wouldn't necessarily say it's TikTok. I think it's just the um, the super high-paced phone-in-your-hand 24-7 um, way of our world today that 
uh, stuff, just attention spans are, are shorter, uh, especially for music. So, uh, like, I get it. And there's lots of these TikTok, there'll always be these, these EDM, like, TikTok conversations where TikTok is ruining specifically EDM music because of also the sped up versions and stuff. But um, I'm, I just never understood the sped up, slow down versions. And I mean, if they want to make them and make money off them, artists and do that, sure, that's great. Go ahead. You, you make your money. And so I'm just not going to listen to it because I don't care for them ever. There's never been a sped up or slow down version of a song I've enjoyed. But if it's making artists more money then power to you edm is hard to understand no not really uh i mean there are some more complex artists out there that have a little bit more narrative storytelling or have these explosive expansive uh like narratives but um like what's so hard to understand about like a fun beat like edm is a lot of just about the production and just how fun beats are and so what's kind of like hard to understand about that 99 out of 100 times the original song is better than the remixes and it's better to ignore listening to them as they don't give a fulfilling listening experience um i would say not 99 out of 100 i would say more often than not i would say the original is definitely a better version um there aren't a ton of remixes that i feel like i enjoy more than an original track but i would definitely say it's not 99 out of 100 i'd say it's maybe like in the 60 or 70 out of 100 range but um i also think that just to i think there's a whole part here that's the really the the crux of this conversation of this topic of just saying it's it's better to ignore them as they don't have to give a fulfilling listening experience i think that's just straight up not not true uh, because I know so many other like even compilation projects remixes that that make uh, the f- actually a more fulfilling listening experience listening to the original and then all of the other artists interpretations of that track it makes me feel like oh that's very interesting you could do this or this is a hard dance version this is a dubstep version this is a house version this is a future based version of an individual song so I think it's way more fulfilling to get the remix packages um, do I often like them more than the original no not very often but uh, I, I think that really that hard part of the conversation is that it's, it doesn't, yeah, it's better to ignore them. I don't think you should ignore them. The dubstep diversity is ironically starting to converge again. A lot of color-based sounds similar as is future-based, melodic bass, and rhythm. Uh, I can't remember if I used this one in the past, but I wanted to talk about this because this was from an older video um, or an older take that I, I couldn't remember if I took it or not, but, uh, Yes, to some extent. I probably wouldn't have said this maybe six, eight months ago, but um, I am starting to feel it a little bit more now, especially in the color-based subgenre, the color-based niche. I do feel the sense of everything sort of coming together. And it's it's now we're at a point where color-based has become, I think, popularized enough where uh, it's sort of melding into melodic bass, like this, like this comment says, and sort of all coming together to make just dubstep again it all it all just becomes dubstep and that also goes back to the the former point of like subgenres do we need to have these subgenres what's the really the point of having naming something color based some melodic dubstep or um all this other different rhythm and trench and all this other stuff like we don't need to have these subgenres that can just be dubstep and so i get that part of the conversation uh and yeah i would say i think more or less yes especially with melodic dubstep and or like and rock like the these fusions they become so popular but they're more and more popular of these in this recent years, I would say. And so, yeah, I, I would agree to some extent that it's becoming um, more, uh, it's it's converging together. And I think I wouldn't have said that at the time that this comment was originally uh, put up. So uh, I'd be interested to see where I land on this again in the, in the coming years, months, whatever. So uh, yeah, interesting one. 